Hello, my name is Colin Mahler. Welcome to Beachcation.com. We are here to do the Byzantine Sunburst Necklace today. Uh, this is a little creation that I came up with. Um, it really morphed from its original creation into what it is here today. Um, it was originally started out much larger. There was a lot more Byzantine work going on, um, but it got a little out of control. So then it gradually morphed into this project that we see here today. So this is what we're gonna be doing. This is an intermediate class. I do expect that you already know how to open and close jump rings and hopefully have some experience linking them together. If you are not familiar with how to do the opening and closing of the jump rings, you may wanna check out one of our free classes. Uh, we have the Byzantine chain and the intro to chain mail classes that will help you out and get you along there. Uh, I also recommend that you watch this class all the way through before you get started just to know what you're getting into. So let's go get started. So here are the tools that you're gonna to be needing today to make your Byzantine sunburst necklace. You will need one pair of regular chain nose pliers, one pair of bent chain nose pliers, one pair of round nose pliers, and one pair of flush wire cutters. To make your Byzantine sunburst necklace, you're gonna need two different sizes of jump rings, uh, the six millimeter in 18 gauge and the 3.5 millimeter in 18 gauge. Uh, I finished this off with just a couple pieces of finished chain, so you will need some finished chain or more jump rings if you wanna make a chain to go with this necklace, either way. Uh, you're gonna want um, some sort of clasp. I just use a, tend to use a simple lobster claw on this project, um, and then some beads for dangling all over the place. Um, I usually start with um, some sort of larger centerpiece bead, and then I have some smaller four millimeter bicone beads here that I will use in other places to dangle and decorate. And then of course some head pins to go with all your beads. So the first thing we need to do is prep our jump rings. Most fun part of all. So what we need is on our smaller jump rings on the 3.5 millimeters, you need eight of your jump rings closed and then you're gonna open all the rest. And then on your larger rings on the six millimeters, you want two closed and then you're gonna open the other five of those and then we'll be all ready to go. Um, we are going to start by creating little units of these 3.5 millimeter rings. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take one open 3.5 millimeter ring and I'm gonna put two of my closed ones onto it and to close this ring up. And then we'll add a, one more of our 3.5 millimeters through the same two closed rings, like so. And go ahead and close it up. Now this is an intermediate project, however, if you've chosen to do the Byzantine Sunburst Necklace as your first chainmail project, I'm gonna recommend that you go look at the free Byzantine video that will tell you how to properly open and close all of your jump rings and will also be handy. The Byzantine Sunburst is a uh, has some Byzantine elements in it, so knowing the Byzantine chain will be quite helpful. That is a free class. So now what I have here is a little section of two pairs of the 3.5 millimeter jump rings, and I want four sets just like this. So I'm gonna set this aside and make three more, and I recommend you do the same. All right, now that we have gotten all our little sections built and ready to go. I'm gonna take two of them and one of my open six millimeter jump rings and I'm going to go through one of the two pairs on that little section. On both of these I'm gonna attach two of these to my six millimeter jump ring like so. One pair is attached to the larger jump ring and the other pair just hangs free and now I'm gonna go ahead and close the six millimeter ring. And then I'm gonna add a second six millimeter ring. So I'm gonna double this. And again, I'm gonna go through all four 
of those 3.5 millimeter rings that I went through with the other six millimeter ring. And now I'm gonna close it up. All right. So now I have this little section of rings here like so. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these two little uh, sections of the smaller rings and I'm going to Byzantine them. So what I want to do is I'm kind of going to pinch onto the two six millimeter rings underneath uh, this pair of 3.5 millimeter rings that's attached to it and these two the other two uh, smaller rings will just kind of hang free. And what I want to do, so basically by pinching just under this pair of rings, I'm kind of making them stand up in my fingers. I'm going to take the other two rings, I'm going to flip them so that one sits to either side. With my pliers, I'm going to grab on to the other pair of small rings and let those two that I uh, separated just drop down. Then I'm going to pinch on two the six millimeter rings and the 3.5 millimeters that I just let fall. And I'm going to take these two small rings and spread them open. You don't need to force them open. That will not be helpful, but just spread them open. When you do that, the two small rings that you let fall should pop up. I'm going to use my pliers, the tips of my pliers to help pull those up in between the spread rings. Now with an open 3.5 millimeter ring, I'm going to go through the the rings that popped up in between the spread rings. Got that. And I'm going to go ahead and close this ring. And then I'm going to add a second one right next to it. So this ring will be doubled. So here's my other 3.5 millimeter. I'm again going through the rings that popped up in between the spread rings. Like so. Close this ring up. And there we have a little section of Byzantine that we just created. So I'm going to turn this over and I'm going to do the same thing with my other set of 3.5 millimeter rings. So again, I'm going to pinch onto the six millimeter rings just under this pair of 3.5s. I'm going to take the topmost pair of small rings. I'm going to spread them open, let them fall one to either side grab onto this other pair of small rings and let those two just fall straight down and then pinch onto them again. Spread this pair of rings open and then with the tips of your pliers, pull the two small ones that you let fall up in between, oops, up in between those spread rings. And again, you don't need to force them open. Just spread them open until those two small ones pop up. Now I'm going to take an open 3.5 millimeter ring. I'm going to go through the two rings that popped up in between the spread rings and close this ring. And then I'm going to add another one. So now I have my two large rings with a little two sections of Byzantine attached to them. Now I'm going to take my other two sets of 3.5 millimeter rings and I'm going to attach them to two 6 millimeter rings and do the same thing. So I want two sections that look just like this. So now you should have two of these little sections of um, chain. And these, though it's hard to tell at the moment, will become the corners of our centerpiece. So what we're going to do is I'm going to spread open the topmost rings on one of our little Byzantine sections here. 
and we're going to add rings at there will be four corners to this piece by the time we're done so I'm going to be adding rings here here and then here and down here so we're going to end up with four corners on this piece so again I'm going to spread open that top set of rings and I'm going to take a an open jump ring one of the 3.5 millimeters and on the right hand side here there are two rings stacked on top of each other I want to go through both of those rings and the more spread open you can keep these rings the more room you will have to link this open ring into so I just have everything pinched in my fingers it's all kind of staying where I want it I'm going to take my open 3.5 millimeter ring and go through these two rings oops here on the right if I can get you a better view of that you see that so I've gone through two rings on the right side here like so and of course I'm going to go ahead and close this ring like so now I'm going to add a second ring so each of these corners will have two rings Again, spread those rings open and get the second ring in there it might be a little tight but it shouldn't be too bad and certainly not impossible and close it like so now I'm going to come over here on the left and do the same thing so now I'm going to flip it so it's on the right I'm a righty I like working on the right if you're a lefty just work the other way that works right okay so here again I have an open 3.5 millimeter ring I'm going through those two rings that I've just flipped over to the right hand side close this ring up and add a second one right next to it So there we go that's that side now I need to flip it over and do the same thing to this other Byzantine section on the other side so again I'm going to spread those rings open and link it open 3.5 millimeter through the two rings on the right side close it up and then I'll add a second one okay and then just two more rings over on this side one and then the second one okay so now I have this piece with four corners on it basically see and you're going to want to do this to the your other piece like this you don't have to do it right now because we're gonna keep on going a little bit 
but whatever you do to this section you'll have to do to your other section as well just keep that in mind we're making two corners to our piece so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a pair of small rings to three of these four corners it doesn't matter which three but three out of the four corners will end up with two more rings on the end so I'm going to take an open 3.5 millimeter go through one of the pairs that I've just added any one again doesn't matter which put that on and close it and then add a second one so remember we're adding pairs of rings to three out of four corners So there's one. All right, so now I have added my extra pairs of rings to three out of four corners. And what I'm going to do next is take two of these sides. Now look at the position of the rings here. I have the two sections of Byzantine across from each other and I'm gonna take one section from each side like so and I'm going to connect this together these two pairs of rings together with two more small rings take out the all grab an open 3.5 millimeter ring go through all four of those rings and close this so again, this is gonna end up being one corner of our piece. So there's that, I'm gonna add a second 3.5 millimeter ring. I'm gonna double this ring. Again, going through the same four rings and then closing this up. Okay, like so. Oops. Now I'm going to add two more pairs of the 3.5 millimeter jump rings to these rings that I just added. So I'm gonna put one ring through that pair and then one more small ring right next to it. Close it up. Okay, and then one more pair of small rings will link to these that I just added. open jump ring goes through that pair on the end there which is becoming our corner and one more all right so there's that. Now, one more thing we're gonna do. I'm going to take these pairs of rings that I just added on the corner here and I'm going to Byzantine them. So I'm gonna pinch just under the second pair down from the end so that they stand up in my fingertips. Separate those two rings on the end there. I'm gonna grab this pair and then let those two rings just fall straight down. I'm going to spread these two rings, pop those up with the tips of my pliers, and I'm going to add two 3.5 millimeter rings through the rings that popped up in between the spread rings. Okay, so there's one. Close it. And I'm going to add one more ring there.
Okay, so here is one corner of our pendant. Oops. And you're going to want to take your other piece of um, your other section of chain that you've built and you're going to want to repeat this whole process and make two sections just like this. So now we have two sections that we just built that should be exactly the same. And these again are the corners of our pendant. And we are going to first attach the two sections together up at the top here. And then we're going to add two more pairs of the small rings down at the bottom. Now you want these two pieces to be mirrored. Um, you don't want them obviously laid out together and you want to make sure that the side that has the extra pair of rings is down here at the bottom and that they're both down on the same side. So I want to attach the two shorter sections together up at the top here. So that's what we're going to do first. So I'm going to take my first section, put a 3.5 millimeter ring through that pair of rings there. Remember the side with the extra ring should be um, down on the other side, hanging down. I'm going to pick up my other section and add it onto that same ring, making sure, I'm going to close this up real quick and then we'll look at it. I just want to make sure that they're attached correctly. Again, you want a mirror image and they are. So again, the two shorter sections are attached. I'm going to add one more ring to finish this connection here. And then again, we'll add two more pairs of rings to the bottom of these other two sections. So once again, we're just doubling this connecting ring. So I want one more 3.5 millimeter ring going through both or all four of those jump rings. Close it up like so. Close that up a little better, shall we? There we go. Okay. And then I'm going to add from these rings dangling from the bottom here, I'm going to add two more pairs. So two rings here. One. And two. one pair. I'm going to add one more pair down at the bottom and then I'll do the same thing on the other side. Oops. So we've attached it in the middle. I've added two more pairs to the end of the chain here, and then I'm going to come over to this side and add two more pairs here. So this is all evened out on either side. All right. So now I have joined my two sections, um, my two corners together here in the middle, and then I've added two pairs of the 3.5 millimeter jump rings to either side. Now we are ready to move on and add the sunburst in the middle of our pendant. So our next step in the process here is to add the sunburst in the center of the piece. I'm just going to lay these here for now. 
So what we're going to do, I'm, I want these large rings to somehow be in the center of this piece. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start attaching up here at the top and we're going to kind of work our way around and end up forming the point on the bottom of our pendant here. So I'm going to take an open 3.5 millimeter ring, pick up my piece here. Now here, right here is our where we've connected the two pieces together. I'm going to connect our large rings to the pairs of rings to either side of that connecting point. So pick a side, any side, it doesn't matter where you start. And I'm going to put my 3.5 millimeter ring through that pair of rings. I'm going to add the two closed six millimeter rings onto that. And of course, go ahead and close that ring. And we'll add one more. We're going to double this. All of our rings that create the sunburst in the center of our piece will have will be connected with two rings at every connection point. So I'm going to take another 3.5 millimeter ring. I'm going to go through the six millimeter rings and the same pair of 3.5 millimeter rings that I just went through. Again, I'm just doubling this ring. Go ahead and close that second ring like so. So now I've made my first connection of my little sunburst here. Have our rays starting to radiate out from the center. So now, center that. Okay, so now I've made that first connection on the left here. So now I'm going to come over to the right of center and make my second connection over here. Again, with two of the 3.5 millimeter jump rings. So I'll go through the two six millimeters in the middle and through the two 3.5 millimeter rings that I'm going to attach it to. Close this ring and add a second one. All right, so there I've made my first connection on the right hand side and now I'm going to take my second 3.5 millimeter jump ring and double that connection. So there's the start of our burst. So now my next two connections are going to be to the large rings to either side. And again, I am using two of the 3.5 millimeter jump rings to make each of those connections. So take my open ring, go through this pair of six millimeter jump rings and through the pair in the center. And then add the second connecting ring. And now I'm going to do the same thing on the other side with the other pair of six millimeter rings. So now I have made um, my connections here on either side to the large jump rings. Now I'm going to move down and coming off to the right side here, I'm going to connect the large rings in the center with this pair of smaller rings. Now we have two pairs of small rings that are kind of facing up. When you look down on them, you're looking straight through the loop of the rings. 
as opposed to these rings here, which you see the top edge of them. So I'm going to be connecting the center rings here and then again down here and the same on the other side. So let's do that. And of course we're making all these connections with two of our 3.5 millimeter rings. So I'm going to go through the large rings in the center and I'm going to connect them to this pair of rings over on the side that I just pointed out. Get this connected and give you a better look at that. See what I'm doing. Okay, so that's the ring I just added. Of course, I have to add that second one and then I'll repeat this over on the other side of the piece. going through those center rings and that same pair of small rings. Close. And now I'll come back over to the other side and repeat that step over here. All right, so now I've just connected the center to either side here and we have two more connections to make. So the rings I've connected the center to here, I'm going to skip the next, the pair next to it and down to the next pair of small rings, which I will now attach to the center. I will do that on both sides of the piece. So now I am ready to make the last two connections. Again, I'm going to go through with my small open ring I've got ready to go here. I'm going to go through those two large rings in the center going to find the two rings. There we go. Second pair from the end of my little chain that I want to attach to. Aha. Like that. Now it is getting a little crowded in this piece at this point, so just persevere. It's worth it. Okay. So there we go, that's the connection I just made. I'm going to add my second ring and then pop over to the other side and do the same thing. So I'm going through that pair of small rings and then coming up through the large rings in the center. Close it up. Look, we're almost there. Okay, now I'm going to make that final connection and then we'll finish up that bottom point. All right, so now I have created my sunburst in the middle of the pendant. Um, we have a total of eight connections all the way around. And our final step here to kind of finish off the chain part of the pendant is to just really connect. So you have these four rings here down at the bottom just kind of dangling around and I'm going to take a, my last large open ring and I'm just going to connect all four of those rings together like so. And I'm going to close it up. And voila, my Byzantine sunburst is almost complete. So here is our finished centerpiece. Well, sans beads anyway. But now we need to actually make a necklace out of it. Or you can just keep it just like that and admire it on your workstation every day but we're gonna make it a necklace. So you have a couple of options here. I'm gonna start by attaching the chain and I tend to cheat on this project once I'm done making the centerpiece. I usually just take a finished piece of chain and attach it to either side. Now this um, centerpiece measures about two inches um, across the top in length. Um, I like to wear my necklaces a little shorter so I'm only gonna be using about 
12 inches of chain to complete this. If you like a longer necklace, then by all means use more chain than this. So we'll be using about six inches on either side. And I'm just going to take the chain and attach it with two jump rings to the rings on the either corner here. Your other option, which I will talk about as I'm attaching this piece of chain, is to continue on with this Byzantine pattern that we've started here if you want to create a Byzantine chain out of the 3.5 millimeter rings instead of using a finished chain or maybe a two by two chain or one in one or whatever you choose to do. Um, if you're gonna do the Byzantine with the 3.5 millimeter jump rings, um, there are about 24 rings per inch of chain on that, so that should help you figure out how many more of the 3.5 millimeter jump rings you will need. So here we go, I have my piece of chain attached by one ring at the corner. I'm gonna add one more ring just because I like two rings to make my connections if I can. And I can, so I will. So here we go with our second ring in the corner, attaching our chain. So there is oops, chain on one side of our piece. Now I'll come over to the other side and connect the chain, my other piece of chain to the other side. Again, using two rings to make that connection. Oops. Now, as you're going through and creating your piece, make sure that all the closures on your jump rings are good closures. It's really hard um, in a piece like this with so much going on to go back and try and close up any rings that weren't closed up properly in the first place just because everything's kind of tight in here and it's hard to get your pliers in and try and close a jump ring in the finished piece. So if you see that a ring is not properly closed, go ahead and take the time and get it closed up right before you move on. Okay, so now I have attached my chain to either corner of my pendant here. And for the clasp, I'm just going to attach a lobster claw to one end of my chain using a 3.5 millimeter jump ring. And I'm gonna keep this really simple since I'm using such an open piece of chain, I'm not going to add an extra ring over on the other side for the loop for my lobster claw to go into. I'm just gonna loop it directly onto the piece of chain. That also gives you a little bit of flexibility as far as the length of your necklace. If it's a little too long, you can just attach it to a different loop further down the line and shorten it up a little bit. So it gives you kind of an extender option. So again, I'm gonna take an open 3.5 millimeter jump ring on the end of one of my pieces of chain here. I'll just take my lobster claw, slip that onto the jump ring, close that up. Like so. And then, when I'm ready to put this on and close it up, I'll just go through one of the loops on the other end of my chain. Nice and simple. And now we're gonna go ahead and add our beaded dangles pretty much anywhere you want. We're gonna start with um, a centerpiece in the middle and then we'll kinda work our way up and add some beaded dangles on the sides. So I have already prepped all my beads. I've got them all wire wrapped and ready to go and now I'm just Gonna, now I'm ready to attach them to my piece. I am going to attach all of these little beaded dangles with 3.5 millimeter jump rings. Um, it is It allows them to hang and, and kind of wiggle a little bit more freely than if I wire up them directly to um, these pairs of jump rings out here. And on the Baroque 
drop here. The hole in this drop is large enough that I can just put a 3.5 millimeter jump ring through the hole and then attach it to my large jump ring down here. So that's what I'm gonna do. And up here, I'm gonna put a little dangle up in the center here. I'm going to use a 3.5 millimeter jump ring to attach it to these two pairs of rings up at the top and then it'll kind of dangle over this little center section. And I'm going to add probably about three dangles here in the center above the drop and then of course the three on either side. Okay, so I'm gonna start with my um, centerpiece drop, my Baroque drop here. Um, now this is a crystal, so you want to be kind of careful with it. Um, again, the hole is large enough, I can just slide a jump ring through the hole. Um, this is a 3.5 millimeter jump ring. A three millimeter jump ring would probably work just as well, um, but I wouldn't go too much smaller than that, otherwise you may end up um, breaking your crystal while trying to close your jump ring. So I'm gonna take my open jump ring here slide it through the hole in my drop. Then I'm just gonna attach it to the large ring dangling from the bottom of my pendant. Close it up. So here is our piece with just the one drop on it. Now for me, I like my pieces pretty plain and simple and I would just stop here, but there are so many places to hang dangles and drops and things that we're just gonna keep carrying on, going with our plan of action. So now I am going to go ahead and add my little cluster of three crystals right above the Baroque drop. So I'm gonna pick up another of the 3.5 millimeter jump rings. I'm going to link my three four millimeter crystals onto it. Like so. And then I'm going to link the jump ring through these two pairs of rings down at the bottom that attach the six millimeter ring at the bottom of the piece. Let's go through all four of those rings. Close it. So there we have that. Now you can also, if you wanna kind of fill in this space with this big ring without necessarily adding more beads, you can always just add the 3.5 millimeter jump ring here without dangling any beads from it. So it'll kind of help to fill in that big empty space created by that big ring on the bottom, but it won't add um, the dangly, the clutter, I guess, if that's too much for you. Okay, so next I'm gonna go move up here and add my dangle in the center of my sunburst. So once again, I need an open 3.5 millimeter ring. I'm gonna peek pick up one of my crystal beads. And now again, I'm going to attach this through the two pairs at the very top of, uh, two pairs of uh, small jump rings at the very top of the sunburst that attach it to the main frame of the piece. I'm going through four rings total. Get it on there and close it up. So oh, there we go, can you see that? Dangling there in the center. And here, see how it's attached to these two pairs of rings here at the top. All right, now I'm going to add my dangles to either side. And I'm gonna go ahead and Dangle a bead right here. So I'm gonna skip this ring 
here for adding a dangle. That might be a little much down in the center and I'm gonna move up to the next pair of rings that I can see through the loop of. So again, an open 3.5 millimeter ring. I'm gonna go through those two rings that I've chosen. Add my bead. Close it up. Now I'm gonna move up here and add a dangle up here. And then one more, and I'm gonna attach it to the rings that are attaching the corner of my piece to the chain. I need my open 3.5 millimeter ring. Go through that pair of rings there, add my bead, and close. So oh, here's our progress so far. And now I'm gonna move over to the other side and add my three dangles on the other side and then we'll be all finished. All right, so I have gone ahead and added my beads to the other side of my pendant and it is all set and ready to wear. All right, so here is the project that we're gonna do today. Um, we are going to, the bulk of this class is creating the, of course, the chainmail part of the Byzantine sunburst, which is this. Um, and these are just a couple different ideas of what you can do with this pendant. Um, this is the project really that I'm going to be going over today with all kinds of beaded dangles all over the place. And I've left it as this shiny silver as opposed to this piece over here, which is all oxidized and just has the single drop um, off the bottom here as opposed to all the other dangles. And I really like this piece um, oxidized. I feel like it really helps the uh, pattern pop out a lot more. Um, and if you're really trying to keep it simple, then it kind of brings out the pattern a lot more and focuses a lot less on the beads. So you have that choice as well. And if you're looking for a lovely pair of earrings to go with your necklace that you're going to be making today, might I recommend the bike chain earrings? They go really well with the uh, Byzantine sunburst pendant. So there you go. Let's go have fun. All right. Well, thank you for joining me here today for to make the uh, Byzantine sunburst necklace. Um, have a great time wearing it. And don't forget that the bike chain earrings do, in fact, go very well with them. That's another class here on Beachcation.com. And if you have any comments or feedback for us, please feel free to get in contact with us. Thanks. See you next time. Mm -hmm.